hey, 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 what the heck? What the heck? Sorry, guys. My name is Sites Kosana, and this is Lows Up Education. You should already know by now that you should be calling me Usem Numzan. And yes, I've heard your cry. You are saying you cannot fully understand my previous video of two types of nucleic acids without doing questions. Yes, here are the questions. And to do Move from that back seat and come and sit at the front. Mwah, only me no, no, no. M move to the front. Mwah. And while moving, make sure you clean this pot. Yes, guys. Sorry for that. I'm going to be fetching my markers. Yes, clean the pot, Ntutus. Ntutus, you clean the pot. As if this is my work. Ntutus, is there something you want no, to tell me? No, Miner. Didn't say anything. Okay. This way. Come sit at the front. Yes, Miner is done. Okay, thank you very much, Mtutus. Yes, in order to understand or fully understand the two types of nucleic acids, you have to answer these questions. All right, number one, our first question says the DNA molecule contains 450 nitrogenous bases. If 20% it is adenine, determine each nitrogenous base found inside that DNA molecule. Okay, and remember, in order to answer any math question you have to first do what collect data collect the most information on that scenario or statement or question so what is the most important is 450 nitrogenous bases and what else 20 percent of adenine 20% of this 450, it is adenine. And to answer your first question, you have to watch the video I dropped before this one, which is about percentages. Okay, and our first step is to obviously understand how many is 20% of adenine in this 450. So what are we going to do? We are obviously going to say 20 divided by 100 because of 20% simply means 20 over 100. Then we multiply by what we are given, 450, the total number of nitrogenous bases. Then our answer will be none other than 90. So now we know that there are 90 adenine inside this 450 nitrogenous bases. So this is adenine, right? Adenine. Second step. What does adenine pair with? Adenine pairs with what we call a thermine. So if adenine is 90, that definitely means a thermine is also 90. So we are going to be saying, therefore, it is 90 when we comes to thermine. Okay, and our third step is to obviously add the two pairing nitrogenous bases, which is going to be 90 times 2 equals to 180. So there are 180 in total, both of them. Okay, and our fourth step is to obviously find the cytosine and the guanine. How do we find them? We obviously say, okay, the total was 450, right? So we are going to be taking this 450, subtracting it with this 180. 180. And our answer will be none other than 270, right? Now we know that 270 is for both guanine and cytosine. But wait, what does the question say? The question said determine each nitrogenous basis. So to find each, we obviously have to do the most simplest part here is to divide by two. And when we divide by two, we are obviously finding our what we call 135 guanine. And obviously, 135 cytosine. Okay, now we know that there are 90 adenine, 90 thermine, 135 guanine, and 135 cytosine. Okay, let's move to question number two. Okay, question two, your free marks. Determine or name the collective name of the structure. You have to know the structure by now. If you do not know the structure, watch the video I dropped before this one because of it explains more about what we call a nucleotide. This is a structure, it's called a nucleotide, which obviously consists of the phosphate group, the sugar, and the nitrogenous bases. Okay, let's continue to our question three. Okay, question three. Question 3 says these are nucleic acids and you have to identify the molecule 1 and the molecule 2. And if you could easily identify them, that means you have watched the video I've dropped before this one. Okay, let's continue. And our answer it is our obvious, uh, did you think of something? 
And if you did, and if you got it right, you should have. Because of this is easy. And our answer is obviously, this is what we call a DNA. And this is what we call an RNA. Or mRNA. I could have given you that mark. Okay, I know you might be scratching your head and saying, Ah, Sam Numzan, I remember you saying... A DNA consists of two strands. Yes, a DNA consists of two strands. But then in this case, you have to look at what we call the nitrogenous spaces. What are the nitrogenous spaces? And that is where you find your answer. For 3.2, it is obviously what we call in the strand, the molecule one, there is obviously a thermine nitrogenous basis. And in molecule two, there's a uracil nitrogenous basis. And that is your answer. You have to make sure you observe as much as possible. Don't just jump into conclusion because of there's a single strand. Okay, and now we are moving to what we are actually here to learn, the DNA replication. Okay, question four. DNA replication. What is a DNA replication and how does a DNA makes a replica of itself? All right. A DNA replication, it is the process whereby a DNA molecule makes an exact copy of itself. The first thing you have to know is that a DNA molecule, it is usually winded or twisted like this. And the first step of DNA replication is to unwind the double helix or the double strand DNA molecule. Then once it has been unwinded, it will obviously look like the DNA structure which I just drew here. Yes. And the second step on a DNA replication, it is that these weak hydrogen bonds will break. You understand? The weak hydrogen bonds will break. And after the weak hydrogen bonds have broken, that will obviously mean the DNA molecule or strand will unzip or separate, right? That is the second step. Then the third step is that when they have separated, both of these original DNA molecules will act as templates. Yes complementary unit. That will obviously lead us to step number four. And step number four is whereby three nucleotide attaches themselves to both of these original DNA strands. Three nucleotide will attach themselves, but then only depending on their nitrogenous bases. You must remember, an adenine can only pair with a thermine and a guanine can only pair with a cytosine. All right, step number five. Two identical DNA molecules have formed. Both of them, they have an original strand and a new strand. Yes. Hey, and remember, what is the purpose of DNA replication? Why does DNA has to have a replica of itself? Because of it has to double its genetic material in order to divide it amongst the daughter cells that will occur when we start learning about meiosis. Okay, now concentrate because of we are moving to our final question, the fifth question. Okay, it's a DNA profiling. Everyone except identical twins have his or hers unique DNA profile. Okay, which can be described using the arrangement of black bars which represents DNA fragment. All right, what do I mean? I mean it is a scientific method used to identify individual by comparing his or her DNA. Okay, number two, what is it used for? It is usually used to identify criminals. One, Secondly, it is usually used to identify lost relatives. Then it is used to identify dead bodies. And it also used to identify my favorite part, paternity. Don't be running around saying that is not your child, knowing very well that you didn't do a DNA profile. Because of now, this is an experiment which we did, Namshanje, whereby we found out that Sipo is really the father of Umtutuzi. Yes, hey, you, see, hey, you, no, hey, not where I'm to do. Take your seat. Nah, yes, Sipo is the father of Mtutuzi. How do we see that? We see that because of there is a black bar on number three, which is Sipo. Suspect number three, it is Sipo. Yes, now Mtutuzi knows his father, it is Sipo. Because of it is matching the top 
Ba, which was used as the sample. Yes. Okay. Yes, guys. To continue the lesson, because of I will always here for you, Buffett. Make sure you click that subscribe button, like my video, and share it if you can. Because of we are moving to protein synthesis. Okay.